Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and we do not have Namio this week. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I've mentioned it on Thespian Talk. I've been going through with some different changes on all three of my podcasts. This is another one of them. And and uh, the person we've got on this week, her name is Julia. How you doing, Julia? Hey, I'm Julia. I'm uh, or GH hyphen musings on Tumblr. Um, been watching GH for about six years or so, and I'm thrilled to be on the podcast this week. I love talking about my soaps. So <laughs> sweet. So six six years. I mean, I, I first started watching back when uh, back when Michael was you know, he, was, he was a baby. You know, he was a baby, a little oh, kid wow. running around. Uh, I, I kind of stopped about 2003 or so. You know, just different things were happening, and then I just just kind of fell by the wayside. And then, like I think it was like last year, I was like, you know what? This is starting to look good again. Uh, <laughs> with, with the nurses' ball coming back and. And, and Faison coming around on the scene, and now you have Obrek running around. Turns out to be, you know, she, who seems to carry all of the torches for Faison, even though he rightly doesn't deserve it. Because, Very true. Yeah, because he's a psychopath, and 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 all of that good stuff. So, uh, so what actually got you into the show? You know, I I'm not sure that I remember. It, um, I think I was flipping channels at one point, and so I'd seen like. I'd sometimes just watch a random episode of just any soap. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it was about GH. It was probably, I'm trying to think when it was, because I, I also, you know, I started going back on YouTube and watching old storylines. So I've seen a lot from before that I actually started watching. I really liked Jason and Sam, I think, yeah. starting out. Um, but I, I have so many favorites now, I don't even know. I love Maxie. Mm-hmm. Um, Kirsten Storms did that uh, Disney Channel original movie Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic if you like Disney Channel original movies. Um, there you go. It's it's ridiculous and delightful. And Raven was in it. Um, and when I saw that she was on, I just was so excited to see her. And now I'm just, I'm so deep. I'm so in. I'm gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Sweet. Uh, I, I know what got me into it. What got me into it was uh, actually my mother was talking about some of the older older stories from like back in the eighties. Uh, you know the whole the original Ice Princess plotline where they tried to freeze the world, and I'm like, okay, that's intriguing. And and the Cassidines said we're just making their big comeback at that time, and so I was like, okay, this this might be interesting. I want to check it out, and I got hooked into it. And I got to watch through, you know, Lucky's death being faked by Faison and Helena, <laughs> and then Stavros coming back the first time, and and I, w- I went back and actually rewatched some of those scenes, and I'm like, holy shit, the the music helps with the mood a lot because they had they they, they had some of that that oh oh god I want to say like that ominous Latin Latin chanting type stuff even though it's not really Latin I don't think. But it, it just set the mood so well. It's like, yeah, shit is getting real. <laughs> yeah, my mom actually used to watch the show in, like, the 70s or so. Um, I think before Luke and Laura even got married, I think was when she was watching. And But she won't watch it with me anymore. She makes fun of me for watching it now. <laughs> it's it's awful. Yeah, my mom actually got started back in the 70s herself. Um, before, hmm. I think before Luke and Laura even became a thing. Yeah. Oh, my mom. My mom was a uh, was Team Scotty. My mom does not like Luke. Ah, uh, I don't know who my mom had rooted for at the time. I mean, obviously, by the time you know eighty one came around, pretty much everybody was kind of rooting for Luke and Laura because Luke, <laughs> scoundrel as he was, you know, he did save the world. Right. Right. Which and and you know they definitely Scotty definitely changed character wise. You know, he started out as you know a pretty good guy, and they sort of slowly started making him a little more and more skeevy yeah I guess. although i i love scotty i do yeah i mean I, i'm i'm not i'm ah uh, I, I don't like him with laura i like him with lucy but yeah i i scott as a character if he's just left to his own he's he's just you know he, he's kind of cool you know hmm. 
Ah, and and this whole thing recently, like with, like this whole triangle between him and Bobby and Lucy. It was just one point where they're both of them are like, "You need to choose now," and he's like, "Ladies, I, I'm I'm the fucking DA. I've got to go and do work. I can't stand I can't stand here and do this right now." You know, it's it's ah. It, 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 is, it is something to be said that Namio is not a fan of Lucy. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I adore Lucy. And I, I, Lucy, to me, like, Lucy and Scotty bring out the best in each other, like, character-wise. Yeah. Um, because Lucy makes Scotty likable. Because whenever, whenever Scotty's with Laura, he just comes off as such an ass, and he gets all jealous of Luke, and he's just unpleasant. But... He's a lot more likable when he's with Lucy, and Scott makes Lucy seem a little more sane, generally. Yeah. So I think they make a great pairing. Like, you know, even if it's not, I, even if it's not romantic, you know, they're yeah. they're really good playing off each other. Oh yeah, I can I can definitely see that. It, it's been a while. I mean, this past year or so is the most I've seen of Scott and Lucy, and 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 Kevin. Yeah. I I, I like Kevin. I, I, yeah. I am just so sad he got the raw end of the deal. With 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 Lucy this past year, I mean, it's just that, that is true. Oh. he's he tends to be though. I think a little condescending with her. Yeah, she kind of rows me the wrong way sometimes. Yeah, a lot of a lot of characters can do that. Yeah, me personally, Lucy, it it just depends on the situation. Honestly, I liked her better when she was on Port Charles, and she was also this kick-ass vampire hunter. That was <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> and. And uh, her cousin was an angel who ended up, you know, you know, with uh, yeah, Alice. Rafe's dad, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked some of that up when when Rafe came on the show. Yeah, yeah, Rafe Jr., who was supposedly the you know the angels, but no, it tr- turned out to be Stephen Clay, who used who who on Port Charles was a vampire named Caleb, and used Stephen Clay as a cover, and is just yeah. Oh boy. I'm kind of sad that they kind of retconned a lot of the supernatural stuff out of it because it's like, come on, this universe, you could do so much more with it than just science fiction. The science fiction is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you could do more with the magic as well. It, I'm I'm also I'm kind of reminded back in like I think it was like 1990 or so when they the had alien. It, yes, the aliens. Yeah. Yes. And and from what I've heard everybody that was watching it was bitching is like, "Oh, this is too fantastical. We can't do this." Yeah, this this wouldn't happen. Um, you guys remember that nine years ago, some dipshit tried to freeze the world, right? <laughs> exactly. Go big or go home. Exactly. And oh, that I I do as as a set of characters. Um, in in terms of the actors' acting style, I like the Cassidines. They they give a good. They're good. You know, they're they're decently good antagonists. They they're they're most of them are pretty intelligent. Helena never dies. <laughs> she's like a cockroach yeah you stomp on her she just doesn't she just goes she just comes right back the next day uh and i'm I'm pretty sure victor will be back at some point oh yeah it's gotta be yeah i i'm wondering too if we're gonna see stefan again because they they were just mentioning him this week yeah that's that seems to be one of those things that uh i've noticed over the years and it's and it still kind of holds they start mentioning a character more and more and more and more odds are they're going to be coming back or they yeah. might be leaving if they're already there Possibly, uh, that that I have noticed has not changed. Oh, uh, I mean, hell, I remember back in the day when uh, Jerry Jacks was not played by a uh, uh, what the actor's name now, I think Sebastian Roche. Ro- Roche. 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 Something. Yeah, the guy, the the Gordon Ramsay look alike. <laughs> <laughs> That's he, one way to put it. Yeah, he does look like Gordon Ramsay. I remember him being b- played by a shorter, dark-haired guy. Uh, I forgot the actor's name. And he had the thing with Bobby, and it was, it was it was kind of I don't honestly don't remember. I just remember I liked him with Bobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but speaking of Jerry Jacks, let's let's start talking about this week. <laughs> okay. Sure thing. Oh, because uh, what, where we had left off last week was uh, Patrick, Sam, and Tracy all over in Amsterdam, and 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 Tracy being horrified that she bought a pot brownie. <laughs> And the door opens, and in walks Jerry Jacks with two of his goons. And it turns out that Jerry is has, has Luke. I don't. I don't think Jerry Jacks is the fake Luke. I, I highly doubt no. that. No. Oh God, no. No. No way. No. It, 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 I'm, I'm still calling. It's it's probably Lord Ashton. 
It, it's I, I love that theory. Yeah, no, I saw that you posted on Tumblr, and I think that's the most interesting theory I've heard so far. Um, it, there's no way it's Jerry. Yeah. I mean, because e- even if, first of all, they would have done a cooler reveal than just had Jerry showing up off of Luke's phone, but also... Um, Jerry wouldn't have been, like, skeeving on Kiki. Jerry was always... Who was Jerry into last he was in town? Alexis, right? Uh, was, was he in love with Alexis? Maybe I wasn't watching at that point. I haven't went back to watch that particular one. I mean, well, the last time he was in town proper was when he was doing the the uh, polonium poisoning thing. But, oh, right, right. And he, didn't, and he didn't have a lot of time there. <laughs> true, true. Um, but I think during the water supply storyline, he was, when he poisoned, which they referenced, I think he was in love with Alexis still. Hmm. Anyway, my point is, it's definitely not Jerry. Yeah. And it is just, oh, dear. But I loved seeing him back on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and so anybody who's going to be like, oh, Jerry is fake Luke. No. No. I'm still calling Lord Ashton. Especially since there, there's the rumor mill going around that uh, the actor who's playing him is coming onto the show again. Mm-hmm. So that that helps that theory. I've also heard that Faison's coming back, which of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's an interesting character. I I, I loved when he was on last time, though, with his interaction with Obrecht and and everything. It was like mm-hmm. he's a super villain, but he's also a comic relief. Yeah. It was yeah. great. Which, I mean, the best villains are. Yeah. Uh, on on this show, anyway. Oh yeah, and Stavros. Oh my God. Oh. How the hell was there any scenery left? <laughs> Oh my god. Well, wait till we get to, to Nina's scenes this week. Oh my god. Nina and Silas. And yeah, Silas. Yeah. Oh! Uh, okay, Jerry, Jerry, let's finish. Yes, let's... let's, let's... One thing at a time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With, Amsterdam. With Jerry, uh, he basically demands, yeah, you know, I, I can tell you where Luke is, I can show you to him, but uh, I kind of want control of ELQ. And Tracy, of course, she doesn't want to bed on Luke's life or anything. She wants to make sure he's safe, so she's like, okay, all right, you know what? Yours. I'll give you my shares, and we'll work on the rest. And and I don't know what they're going to do with Sam and Patrick yet. Uh, I'm just really not quite sure. And it also turns out that Jerry is working with Helena! Because all the villains are clearly in league with each other. Of course. Of course. At this particular point, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, just... See, you know, if only the good guys would all share their information, they'd get so much more done. Yeah, which you can't – I can't really blame the, the the lack of communication between the WSB and Anna Devane because, well, the US, the WSB, uh, they've been controlled by the Cassadines for a while. Right, right. So yeah, I can't really blame them there. Uh, don't know about the DBX at this point. I don't know if they're still evil or, or if they're working to take care of the W. SB because they've 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 been uh you know you know lured to the dark side if you will or what have you. I mean I know Robert Scorpio has a whole you know a bunch of uh, WSB agents that went rogue because you know mm-hmm. they're the good guys. Uh, but other than that is like yeah and and I do agree more communication among the good guys that would be great. <laughs> I mean, like, I couldn't believe how long it was taking everyone to get to something's wrong with Luke, because so many people knew some aspect, had noticed something, and if I'm just like, if you all just sit down and compare notes, you'd realize something is really wrong with him. Yeah. And but we're getting there, finally. Yeah, little by little, it's like, come on, guys. I mean, it, it's unrealistic to expect them to know what happened at Miss Cabbage. Very unrealistic there. Which, which I've said it. I think I said it when we actually talked about that particular uh, episode, that particular week. Um, but uh, Tony Geary, he 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 did a really damn good job, mm-hmm. you know, playing off himself, leaving. It's, it's like Jeebus! you know that that is one of the best things about this show. So much scenery chewing. <laughs> I just love it, uh, and even without the scenery chewing, it was it was really good, really effective, and. And just oh god, so and speaking of Helena, they they almost got you know they they got the fingerprints from Jason to find out who he really is, yeah. and just as they were about to get it, boom! The computer suddenly loses it, of which, course. which of course I saw coming, and naturally it was Helena that did it. And they the the cheat sheet I've got up here says it was the guy that was. No, that she has watching Jason did it, but I I don't know. I mean, Cassadines, I've known Cassadines to be a little computer savvy. Uh, yeah. I, know, I know Stefan was. 
So and that was that was so disappointing because I mean I knew it couldn't come out that fast, so I, it's not that I wasn't expecting it, mm-hmm. but I just I can't. I'm so upset that Jason's back and he's having all these like reconnecting with Liz and all this stuff, but, which is great and they have history and and those scenes have been really nice, but I just cannot handle that Sam is on another continent and yeah. and hasn't even met him. Yeah, but when she gets back, I'm sure she will. Yeah, really sure she will. <laughs> well. But will she be already screwing Patrick by that point? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Because we know she wants it. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yes. And, of course, Helena's got all of these plans for Jason Morgan. Ooh. Which, now, where I, where I got a little confused was he, like, jumped out of the moving car or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Ended up who knows where. Got hit by a car. Was in the hospital as a John Doe. No one knew where he, who he was, and his face was all covered. So how did Helena know it was him? That's a, uh, uh, mm-hmm. that's actually a good question. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe the cast and eyes are just that good at figuring things <laughs> out. I don't know. That's Smarter a... than everyone else. It's poor Charles. Apparently, yes. <laughs> just curious as to what helena's got planned for him uh, well she she's already she tried the brainwashing thing once with lucky so maybe she's doing a take two of that situation yeah. i mean and it obviously it has something to do with taking over port charles because she's in league with jerry who is wanting the shares from elq because hey elq great way to launder money well is that really why he wants it though I'm... he might be in it for something else we know fake luke wants the company yeah maybe jerry's is working getting on... something else out of the deal yeah and and he's just doing fake luke's dirty work because right. apparently nobody else is able to do it his hired goon was not able to kill michael <laughs> and and of course the jeromes are inept at taking out sunny although at this point i see i'm i'm oh god i just the jeromes they're, they're turning against fake luke it looks like here oh yeah because it's like, yeah, you know what? No, fuck you. We, we've we got families and shit now. You know, back when I had nothing to lose, that was one thing. I've got shit to lose now. Mm-hmm. You know, and, of course, Ava going mama bear when she realizes that fake Luke, uh, well, he tried to rape Kiki. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who you are. Uh, I'm going to get behind you if if you're in that situation. I don't care if you're Ava Jerome. I, I you know what? I would even be behind Helena Cassidyne if she had, you know, if her daughter was still alive and was almost raped by somebody. I would be behind her on that because that is some horrific shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm team Ava generally just because I'm team Mora West. Yeah. She's so fantastic that I'm even when she's doing shady things, I'm still absolutely loving her. And her going all mama bear, and now Morgan getting all papa bear, I'm just taking care of her and the baby. Like, mm-hmm. I'm loving it. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And the and last thing about Jason, uh, Jordan had come to make sure he couldn't remember anything, can't contradict mm-hmm. her story. And he's like, I don't remember much. But then after she leaves, he's like, okay, I remember voices, but not hers. At least not <laughs> initially. Uh, from the way they played it, it seemed like he remembered Ava's first and then Jordan's later. Yeah, yeah, because they were talking over him. Yeah. So so that, that might help Jordan's case a little bit. Uh, and speaking of Jordan, Sabrina tells Jordan, hey, um, yeah, Ava got the wrong pills because if, if she takes those, they're going to induce labor. Because Sabrina, you know, realizing, oh shit, Ava may not have been the one to run Patrick in her off the road you know she's just like okay i've got to stop this and so she did (laughs) but Mm -hmm. unfortunately at this point as we know it's too late ava's already started taking those pills right and now she's going into labor oh boy and and of course she can't leave because otherwise sunny will get her and take the baby and then kill her Mm -hmm. which i've which you've you You've heard me on on previous shows, and, and other people have as well. It, it's just, ah, I don't like the way Sunny is going about it. I, I, you know, Same. Yeah, it's, it's just, no, dude, no. I, I know you want to get her back for killing Connie. I can, I can understand that. I can accept that. Sure. But you're such a dick. 
Yeah, that one hundred percent true. I think I think I I posted about this a while ago on Tumblr because I was so annoyed at Sunny, and I think I said, I um I hate when he he treats women occasionally like disposable baby making machines because he's done this more than once. Yeah. With Claudia, you know, he absolutely hated her, and then when she was pregnant, he was like, okay, well, the ba- the babies, that's a good thing, but I still hate you, and I'm not saying he should like be totally fine with Ava because the baby, but just the way he treats her, like, oh, as soon as the baby's out, then I can just, like, that's not, that's not cool, no. Sunny. No. And I hate even more, because I, I, as much as I hate it, I will say it's kind of in character for him, mm-hmm. but Sean is just, like, gleefully taking her away for the slaughter before Jordan stopped him. Yeah, it's like, dude, what the fuck? And he's being such a hypocrite, too. He keeps calling Jordan out for, like, her drug running, which, like, he thinks she's actually doing. Yeah. And I'm just like, you're murdering people. Yeah. Where is your high ground here? I know. I mean, at least when you're running drugs, yeah, there's a chance that kids will get a hold of it and kids will be killed over it. But, you know, it's, you know, there's a higher risk and and rate of death by being a hitman. Mm Mm-hmm. You know... Your, that's your job is to literally kill people. I mean, so yeah, you're right. There is no moral high ground for him. You know, maybe he and Alexis should have stayed together because they both are good at being hypocrites. Ah, <laughs> uh, fair point. <laughs> although, although I think I do, I have noticed Alexis, you know, at least admitting it from time to time. I haven't yeah, seen Sean admit it. Yeah. No, Sean. I'm so done. I'm so done with Sean right now. It, it's like, um, yeah. Yeah, Jordan deserves better. Yeah, Jordan deserves better. TJ deserves better. Yeah, for sure. Well, I I feel like I've heard rumors that somewhere down the line, TJ's father might not be as dead as we think he is. Oh, that uh, that actually that's does not surprise me. Rumor. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me though, because right. that's how things work. <laughs> uh, exactly. Oh, uh, so so Ava, of course, yeah. You know, after taking the medication, she's going into labor and. You know, Morgan's trying to help her through it. Geeky comes in, you know, because she and Michael went off to the island because Sonny wanted to protect him. And, and again, it goes back to I hate the way Sonny operates there. It, it, it's like, you know, you're not getting a choice. You know, you get no choice in the matter. I mean, his 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 uh, uh, his reason is justifiable. He wants to protect Michael, and I understand that. But Michael's an adult, you know. Well, you know, I think they're still learning that, Carly and, and Sonny. You know, M- Michael is their baby, you know? Yeah. And he's he's only now, to me, just seeming like he's really finally coming into his own and becoming an adult. And I think it's going to take them a little bit, little bit of time to, to get that. Yeah, which they seem to have very little problems with Morgan on that front, because I, I don't see... Th- I haven't seen them you know, dote over Morgan as much as they've, they have Michael. At least not in the past year. I, I Maybe I missed something, I don't know, but... Well, I mean, the whole wedding thing with Kiki, when um, Sonny was desperately trying to prove that he loved Morgan mm-hmm. by lying to everyone, and Carly was actually proving that she loved Morgan by saying, like, no, we need to tell the truth and not let our son marry this girl that doesn't really love him. And, yeah. you know, there there was some of that there. And I think it depends on who's currently in trouble. You know, if someone had just tried to kill Morgan, they'd be sending him to the island, too. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's just, they, they need to get on with it. They need to get over it. Michael, I mean, even if you go chronologically, because I think chronologically, uh, you know, in real world time, I think he was born about 98, Oh, God, really? Yeah. So he should be, let's see, uh, 98, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, wow. If, if they went chronologically, he would he would have been, he'd be only 16. Yeah, but I think he's more like, what, 24 yeah. or so now? Because if Morgan is college age-ish, yeah. then Michael's, you know, a couple years older at least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, soap opera rapid aging syndrome. Yay! It's great. <laughs> you gotta love it. I, uh, yeah, I will. I'm, I will forever be disappointed that they aged Morgan so far above Molly, though, because they've barely spoken since Brian Craig came on the show. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I admit, I, I wasn't watching those days when Morgan and Molly were close to the same age. Oh, 
they were precious. They were like best friends, and they were always getting into like little adventures together. It was great. And I, I do not regret that Haley Poulos is still on the show because she's a gem, and I love her as Molly. But I wish that she and Morgan still, still talked. Yeah. Well, who knows what'll happen in in the coming weeks? Right. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> oh, so. So anyway, Kiki coming back, she gets to the brownstone, she notices her mom's in labor, and everybody is like, okay, we need to get you to the hospital, we need to get you to the doctor. No, Sonny will, Sonny will get me. And and so Kiki's like, okay, you know what, I'll go get my dad, he's had to make the rounds, he's had to deliver babies, so he'll, she'll, she goes to get him, and she gets to his apartment, and he is knocked out on the floor. Why is he knocked out on the floor? Fucking Nina. And I don't mean in the sexual sense, I mean goddammit motherfucking <laughs> Nina. Ah. That was that was fantastic. Those scenes with the two of them. Yes. I was so thrilled because you know Michelle Stafford's been on the show for what a few months now, mm-hmm. and she we've seen sort of glimpses I think of what she can do, and I've heard about how wonderful an actor she is, but I've never I never seen her on any of the other soaps. I never watched her. Yeah. So we keep seeing these sort of glimpses when she's with Rosalie, when she's with Franco, of really what she can do, but. But Nina has been play acting this whole time, so we haven't really been able to see Michelle Stafford really playing Nina. Oh, and these yeah. scenes were phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And it starts with Silas cornering Travis and like, okay, tell me what's up. And Travis spills the beans. He, he, he just like lets it all out. And, and Silas is, is, is like, all right, you know, you know. You know, you know, I I don't remember exactly what deal he made with Travis, cause, but he's he's not going to report Travis or anything, as far as I know. And mm-hmm. once it's done, and, and and the entire time Nina is trying to text him, and she's like, oh, don't 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 say anything, don't say anything, getting increasingly more threatening, not realizing <laughs> that Silas is holding the phone. <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> Travis knows to cut his losses. Uh, and and honestly, the ethics aside, I honestly can't blame him for taking the money because of student loans. Right. Because yeah, in this economy, you know, student loans. Yeah, very oppressive. And, and honestly, while not strictly ethical, he he wasn't really doing anything too terribly wrong. He was not harming anyone, as far as he knew. Yeah. R- Rosalie, on the other hand, knew way more about what she was doing for Nina, yeah. and probably shouldn't have been doing. Yeah, and and even and there are even points where Rosalie is outright telling Nina fuck no. Right. Like seducing right. Michael. Uh-uh. Especially after nearly getting shot and oh, Nina, yeah. and Nina doesn't is, believe her, which was so funny. It's like Nina's like, "Oh, boo hoo, you almost got shot." And I'm like, "Nina, you fucking bitch." <laughs> I mean, it's like, Ro- yeah, Rosalie has lied, and, and she's told her fair share of lies, but, mm-hmm. yeah, if somebody just damn near got killed by a hitman because of whatever reason, I, I don't think that's an easy thing to fake for somebody who is not Nina Clay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, wow. <laughs> so Travis spills the beans, and Silas confronts Nina, and and she lets a lot of it out in the open. Not everything. But she lets a lot of it out in the open. He's like, you know what? It's over. You know, we're done. Finally. Yes. And I'm kind of sad that it, that the writers had Silas take as long as he did. Cause, cause, eh, but eh, I guess dragging out the drama a little bit. you got to keep the viewers coming back somehow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. But, um, but we also learned that Madeline's out of jail. Oh, I was... I, like, I'm not disappointed to see her exactly because she and Obrecht are hilarious yes but, but I just have to say that just because Nina's alive doesn't mean she should not have been charged for attempted murder or manslaughter attempted manslaughter or whatever she put her in a coma for 20 years and ostensibly caused her miscarriage although my money's on the baby showing up yeah of um, course it will <laughs> but like there's there, oh I, you know the 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 Legal system on General Hospital leaves much to be desired. Oh, yeah. Much like the legal system in the real world. <clears throat> <laughs> ah. But, yeah, they, they argue, they bicker, and she's on the verge of revealing things about Nina. Nathan comes in, tries to throw her out, and Madeline's like, yeah, um, Nina's got control of the family fortune now. I'm penniless and homeless. 
Which, at first, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, there, there's got to be an angle here. There's got to be. But the more I watch Madeline throughout the week, especially when Nina finally confronts her, mm-hmm. it, it's like, yes, there, there has been a switch. And it doesn't explain why Madeline was so gung-ho on pinning this on Silas. Maybe just to cover right. her own ass. Mm-hmm. But, you know... It, 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 they are retconning a few things here that I'm yeah, seeing. Yeah, it makes me want to go back and watch some of those earlier scenes to see if they're if they really have been playing this all along, or if there's disconnects in what the writing was when she first was was coming on the show. Yeah, and and during all of this, uh, Silas and Nina they have their confrontation at the apartment, and this is after Silas has talked to Franco, who was watching Sunny Carly porn. Uh. <laughs> and that was an awkward conversation mm-hmm. to start with and then Franco's like okay did you know that Nina could do the wheelchair thing and and and, and all of that and Franco just casually brought up the list and and Silas is like wait wait what list what <laughs> and and so he finds out about the list and he confronts Nina about the list and they they get into the thing and then Nina ends up knocking him out and going off to her brothers, who are, well, that's where Madeline happens to be. And Nina starts going batshit. Oh. And, and, and throughout all of this, Madeline has been saying, yeah, Nina could get violent. And, and giving, giving examples of her violence, telling Nathan, hey, Nina can be violent. You might want to be careful if you go after her. And so he goes to try and find her. But she finds the apartment anyway, and she starts threatening Madeline. I... You know, the scenery, how the hell was there scenery left, number one? Number two, I, I, I just wish that the FCC didn't have a lot of these rules that they have for language on television or whatever. <laughs> because I would have loved to have seen, uh, you know, Nina just make a big panty and stocking reference and just go, Repent, motherfucker! Repent, motherfucker! <laughs> it's like, oh, God, that would be amazing. <laughs> It, it was it was pretty great, you know, as it is, even without that. Um, Nina, I just want to see her go completely off the rails. Like, I, did, I never wanted to go back to pretending. Yeah. Because sickly sweet Nina was is just kind of, just kind of got grating mm-hmm. after a while. But this is just heaven. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, of course, Mad- Madeline is, you know, she, she manages to keep herself from getting killed. And then, and then Nina is like, wait a minute, you can help me steal Ava's baby! Because that's how she wants to have, she wants to have a baby. And she wanted to have a baby with Silas, but no nope, menopause happened. So, you know, so sorry, that happened. But, um, yeah, stealing a baby is not the right thing to do. But she's also insane. Right. And it's also, you know, she doesn't conveniently have, uh, someone to switch the baby with, you know? Like, usually when there's baby stealing going on, like with, um... Oh, uh, Sam and Taya, right? Mm-hmm. Taya's baby was stillborn or, or died shortly after being born, so there was, like, a way to switch the baby, and then no one would know, you know, at least until it all came out. But Nina, like, there's no way she's just gonna be able to be like, oh, yeah, look, I just got a baby from nowhere. Yeah. You know, she, she's she's really not thinking this through, and this is just going to end very badly yeah. for, for everyone, I'm sure. She all. she is not the smart kind of insane. She is the stupid kind of insane. Oh, no, I, and it's great. <laughs> it is great. Yeah. Oh, lordy. So, okay, where, where are we at? Oh, yeah. Just, uh, speaking of Nathan, this actually happened a little earlier in the week. Uh, he and Maxie, you know, they have their running at the gym. And, and they, and they you know, he, he's just heard from his mother that she'd killed his father or the man who was supposed to be his father. Right. And, you know, and he, he's kind of shaken up because, you know, both of his mothers and his supposed father were all insane. And, and, you know, and Maxie's consoling him. And then of course, Maxie at the end is like, you know what? I'm going to get Diane Miller. We're going to fight the judge on this. I just wonder, you know, what is the judge's problem with this? I mean, if he's, they're worried about dangerous situations. Yeah, he was in that same situation with her. In fact, she was dragged into it. He went to go rescue her. I don't think that was Nathan's fault. No, I, he's 
okay, I mean, there's there's times when you're like, character, what are you doing? And then there's times when you're like, writers, what are you doing? Yeah. And I think, I mean, unless he's got some personal stake motivation that's going to be revealed, I think this is more of a case of the writers just being like, well, now we need to think of another reason to keep Maxie and Nathan apart. Because they're clearly so perfect. So yeah. perfect. They've got to come up with some obstacle. Yeah, and... And Georgie's a huge one. Mm-hmm. Because Nathan is the perfect man. <laughs> and there's no way, like he said, I mean, there's no way he's going to be the reason that Maxie doesn't get her daughter back. Because unlike some people, he cares about Maxie mm-hmm. um, and wants her to get her, her daughter back. And, and, and Maxie obviously does too. So they're not going to want to risk that. But I'm glad she's going to Diane because I don't think he can really... No. force them to not see each other. Yeah, not legally. It, it, yeah, because there's no... there's If it was a, like an endangerment of the child reason, you know, if Nathan was a criminal or had a violent history or something, mm-hmm. but he's a cop. He's, you know, he's not a, a bad guy. No. So... No, and, and and he it's not like he's living with his irrationally crazy and violent sister. <laughs> so, you know, you know... And and he's not living with his other sister, who, you know, who know, you know, at one point, granted under the under pressure from her mother, you know, you know stole embryos and and gave right. birth to one. So you know, which speaking of Brit, you know, she's finally moved back into Windermere. I say yay. Oh, <laughs> so dumb. I'm sorry. Brit's great. Yeah. Nick is great. Nick is an idiot. Okay. <laughs> if he's He's still trying to trust her. He keeps talking about how he's, you know, things are much better now, but he's working on the trust. And, you know, I think Spencer asked him about marrying Brit again. And he was like, I don't know. We're still working on that. And I'm just like, then why did you move her into your damn house, sir? Yeah, that that is a little too fast, I think. I mean, it's I'm, way, I'm... I mean it was fast the first time. True. And now with everything he knows now... <sighs> Yeah. I just I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean I could cuz again Nick is a bit of an idiot, but Yeah, he, he is he is one of the good Cassidines and why the hell are, uh, are they are they trying to go for the good is dumb trope here? <laughs> I hope not. I don't know. I'm kind of sensing it. Yeah, it's god damn it. Of course, and you know it's eventually going to come out that Brit had helped Spencer hide from Nicholas. <laughs> You know that's oh. eventually going to come out. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be like, no. It's going to be bad. Yeah. And just, oh, God. Hmm. And now, what did you think about Nicholas and Spencer discussing Courtney? Because, like we talked about earlier, a lot of times when they start mentioning characters, that means they could come back. But it could also have just been a nice nod to the history and Spencer yeah. acknowledging his mom and how he's kind of seeking out that mother figure from Brit. Yeah, I, I thought that was a I thought that was a nice touch. You know, yeah. well done, nice touch. Um, and, and definitely now if they start mentioning Courtney more and more and more and more and more as the days go on, then we're gonna have then I'm gonna start wondering. Okay. In, in terms of in terms of you know whether or not she'll be coming back. And how did she die again? I think she was. Did she fall off the tower at Windermere or something? Uh no, I think that was uh, Catherine Bell. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, both times. <laughs> First time, well, Helena resurrected her. The second time, I think Helena did it herself and just left her dead. And tried mm-hmm. and probably tried to pin on Stefan. Right. Of course. Uh, because Helena plays favorites with her sons. We all know which one she loves more. You'll note that Stefan hasn't come back from the dead yet. <laughs> and, and, you know, this makes me wonder, why have they not tried to bring back Mikos? Because he he was the mad mad scientist, yeah, he was frozen in the ice chamber, but cryogenics seems to be the Cassidines' bag here. I mean, there's gotta be there's gotta be a point at which you're really and truly dead, even on a soap. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, Edward and Lila are yeah. honestly truly dead, and if they're if they keep playing it this way, AJ's truly dead, which Alan, yeah, also. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick Weber, as well. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Steve Hardy, like, one of the, like, original characters. You know, he died mm-hmm. back in the late 90s. Well, mid-late 90s. 
So, you know, he's gone for good. And, and a lot of it is because of actor existence failure. They don't want to recast the character, you know. Right, some of those classic yeah. roles. Like, they, they couldn't recast, um, you know, Edward or Lila because those two actors, you know, they made those roles their own. They recast Edward once, and that was, like, mm-hmm. at the, at, you know, like in the 90s when Edward came back after people, you know, after he had faked his own death. But he'd come back looking like somebody else. And they recast him temporarily again in, like, you know, about the time I was watching the first time. But they brought John Ingle back eventually until John Ingle passed away. And then it's right. like, yeah, you know, that's... Well, what, gonna when be good. did Mikos die, or when was the last time he was on? Uh, Mikos, well, he, well he, was, he was the madman behind the whole Ice Princess freaking the world plot. He got thrown in the ice chamber by Luke. This was in 81. Oh, my gosh. It's been quite a while. Oh, yeah. But, hey, you know, I mean, it was, uh, let's see, Stavros was 83 to about 99, 2000, or maybe 2001, so so 18 years for Stavros between 83 and 91. Not 91, but uh, 2001, I think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's possible. Yeah. So very, very much possible, especially since he was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he and Tony and Alexandria, um, and, and I think a couple of the other people that – yeah, that, that that they were gonna kind of revolt against Mikos because they thought he was going too far. Because yeah, that that we went to control, but we don't want to do no, <laughs> we can't. We're out. Okay, you're out. You just go out this way. Oh, right in here. Okay, don't mind the cold. <laughs> oh, that sort of thing. Ah, but it would be interesting to see how they would work Mikos into a plot nowadays. I mean, they were they were able to bring back Victor rather easily because he never died. He was just sent to prison for a long time. Oh, but speaking of prison, uh, we get to we get to one of the last last parts of of at least on my cheat sheet and one of the things we haven't talked about. We we mentioned him a couple of times, Mister Franco. Oh. And this whole thing between him and Sonny over Carly. Oh, god damn. I mean, I mean it's, it's like, okay, Sonny and Sean, they want to take out Franco. Mm-hmm. Because, in part, Sonny wants Carly all to himself. This is, and this is my, my, my thinking here. You know, he wants Carly, fuck Franco, and it just so happens that Franco has information that could severely damn him you know mm-hmm. the fact that Sonny killed michael's biological father the same biological father that michael was getting close to and actually loved you know yeah it was a heat of the moment thing but you know what i don't care Sonny broke his promise and, and he did what he said he wasn't going to do true i i will say though mm-hmm. he even though he was wrong uh, about what was happening, he also did think that in that moment AJ was, and well, and AJ was attacking Ava, yeah. and at the time he did not know that Ava wasn't one who killed Carly. So, in addition to AJ, he thinks having killed Connie, he walks in and him attacking another woman. Yeah. So in that moment, I'm not saying murder is justified, but I don't really fault Sonny for that in the moment act. Well, now it's it's all the Covering up and kidnapping and trying to kill Ava, shit. That's a very premeditated yeah. that I have a problem with. Now see, now, see, here's where the problem with the shooting itself comes in. When, a- when he shot AJ, he was no longer a threat. AJ was not going after uh, Ava anymore. He, you know, he pulled off of Ava, and you know, they got into a shouting match. He tried to say he did not kill Connie, and... In... And then, yeah, yeah, that's Sonny Sean. So, Fair enough. Yeah, Sonny's a mobster. Yeah. So I'm not shocked by that. Yeah, but... definitely not because well, hey, and he's a mobster that oh my god, he actually got his hands dirty. Ugh, because he because <laughs> the way I've known him is like he usually sends somebody else to do his dirty work. Right, right. So it's just oi. and it's like okay, we gotta kill Franco. Who are you going to pin it on? So they run through a whole list, bringing up characters that are either dead or locked away in prison or whatever. And... Maxie Jones, of all people. Yeah, it's like, Maxie, really? Come what? on. Oh. And they end up use, going with the idea of Heather Weber. Which would be brilliant. Except, except... <laughs> Franco's gone to see her. Basically. And apologizes. Yeah, and say, you know what? You were right about Carly. 
you know, she, she, because she cheated on him, ne never mind what anybody, you know, thinks about Franco, you know, because, and, and to me, I'm looking back on everything having to do with Franco since he got the tumor removed and since he's been making an actual effort to, you know, you know, pick himself, pick himself up, make a good life for himself with the woman that he loves. Yeah, he's got a bit of a jealous streak and it's unfortunately come to a really bad point. But all up in there, I'm, I'm seeing more of the tragedy that is Franco since the brain tumor because it's like, yeah, he's done some heinous things and he's trying to make good he's 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 repentant and he's trying to be better and a lot of people just spit in his face over it granted a lot of it is justified it's, it's completely justified yeah yeah but at the same time it's like he's really trying to do better and and it's like and maybe and maybe it's part of that 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 just kind of you know gets at him a little bit it's, well, see, I I don't buy the brain tumor crap. I don't. I don't buy it for a second, and I don't think that the narrative has really held him accountable for what he's done. Mm -hmm. So, with everything that he's done, I don't. <laughs> I don't feel bad for him. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm excited that he's that this happened actually because I really want his true colors to to come out, and I think he was. He's been fooling himself if he really thinks he's changed. And he's definitely been, you know, kind of making some people believe it. I think a lot of people, like Maxi calling him out, don't believe he's changed. And I think he's about to prove that he hasn't really changed with yeah. all this crap he's about to pull with Carly and Sonny in the wedding. Yeah. And and that's another thing. It's like, I mean, if... And, and, and I know this is going to sound really bad of me. But if Carly hadn't went and just and cheated on him with Sonny, or cheated on him, period, you know, knowing the jealousy and everything, you know, and, and you know, with with like the times that Franco has seen Carly with Sonny before, and Sonny's trying to get all up on her and everything, trying to muscle his way in, because he's Sonny, he wants to fuck somebody, so he's going to do it, doesn't matter. You know, not going as far as rape, thankfully, as far as I've seen, but, you know. No, Sonny wouldn't. Yeah. But, but, you know, he wants somebody he, – he's going to badger her until she says yes, which, not cool. And right. it's pretty, kind of what he did with Carly here. And, and, and of course, Carly is, is not – obviously, it takes two to tango. Carly gave in, and, and that's not good on her either. And, and I have a feeling if that was not a factor, then things would have been better off for Franco. You know, that, that maybe, you know, yeah, you know, he, he – you know, maybe – and maybe he would have done something that would have shown, you know, like you were saying, his true colors. Maybe he would have done something elaborate and over the top and just, you know, to kind of kind of troll with everybody, do something for the evils and all of that good shit, you know. And maybe he would have. But now it's just kind of, you know, pushing him in that direction because he feels like, you know – Well, no, no. I feel like you're, you're treading dangerously close to, to victim blaming. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm I assuming am. he's going to victimize Carly coming up. But my thing is – or the thing with Franco is that if he really loved Carly – I mean, if you really love anyone and there's a breakup, and even if it's a bad breakup, mm -hmm. you don't – you know, spill their secrets or do something damning to them. Because when you're in a relationship, there's some level of trust there. Right. Carly shouldn't have to be terrified of, of making him mad or making him jealous because he might send her to prison or send Sonny to prison or destroy her relationship with her son. That's not, that's not a healthy relationship. That I you know, can agree with. I even agree even with if that. she doesn't cheat on him, she's still... Because right as of now, she's saying it's over, and she thinks he doesn't know about the cheating. And she's still terrified to back out of the wedding. She told Bobby, it's too late to cancel the wedding. It's too late. I have to do this because of Michael. Yeah. And that's not a healthy relationship. And that's not something that someone who's someone who's really in love with you, that they should be holding over your head like that. Remember when Franco um, said he was going to tell Michael and like was about to call him like in front of Carly and Sonny? And then he was like, oh, I'm just joking. I was, I was so horrified by that. And I can't believe that Carly didn't see the red flags then. Yeah. Honestly, I, I am of, you know, regardless of, of, you know, Franco's relationship with Carly or deteriorating the relationship with Carly, I would honestly rather Michael find out the truth 
because they just it just seems like they hide so much from him and and and, and it looks like speaking of michael there was like this bit where he talked to sabrina and sabrina is outright telling him no carlos did not kill aj yeah and and it's like oh dear is he gonna find out from some other source (laughs) oh dear yeah. That was pretty great. I loved Sabrina. Sabrina's writing has been a little weird lately, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I know that's caused some very strong feelings in some people. I've been kind of waiting to see how it shakes out with her um, to really form an opinion. But I really liked her defending Carlos like that, especially because, if I'm not mistaken, currently Michael has no reason to think that AJ didn't kill Connie. Like, that's what that's the general knowledge, right? Everyone still thinks... That AJ killed her. And he I thought he was being very rude to Sabrina, telling her, like, oh, well, you know, dodged a bullet on that one about Carlos. And she was like, yeah. so I loved seeing her stand up and be like, hey, no, wait. Yeah, that was a little dickish on Michael Spartan. Good on good on Sabrina. Yeah. Um, and and to get to get back to the Franco one, though. Yeah, you are. You are right. It is. It is dangerously close to victim blaming on my part there, um, because because I'm one of those guys, I do try to see from every point of view. I try to. How how well I succeed is a whole different story, but I at least try to. And and you and you were mentioning the you know the red flags, you know, being afraid of Franco and everything. That's not cool either. That that also is not cool. I mean, if it had just been like Franco and Sonny and Carly not having all of this fear or whatever, I think that would make it a little better mm-hmm. and a little bit more palatable to me. I. Mainly because, you know, past few weeks, I, I've been just on this whole fuck Sonny, fuck Sonny, fuck Sonny thing. Because, well, you know, Sonny's a dick and he's – and, and, yeah. and it's like and it's like he gets away with pretty much everything and that just really gets to me. And it's like, no, you need to pay for your crimes, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't care if you're a mob boss. I mean there are some crimes you need to pay for. Killing your son's biological father is one of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, and now I I, I love Sonny. Mm-hmm. He, he Maurice Bernard to me is like I can't imagine John in a hospital without him. Yeah. Um. So so I I will always have kind of a soft spot for Sonny, but lately yeah he's been freely pissing me off, and and honestly starting from when he jumped into bed with Olivia like five seconds after Connie died. Yeah. Um, it's like really, dude. Yeah, and, and part of that to me seems a little out of character for, for both him and Olivia. Mm-hmm. So I think part of that was just the writers wanting more drama sooner. Um, and then, but then straight into Ava's bed, or you know, tomb. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, God. and then all of a sudden pursuing Curly. And if you if you follow me on Tumblr, you know I love Curly and Sunny as a couple. I've been wanting them to get back together for ages. They're they're my favorite. They're one of my favorite couples. But I, I don't like the way they're doing it. I don't like the way they've been writing him, pursuing her after she's told him no again and again and again, and not and not not it's not it's not about respecting Franco. It's about respecting you know yeah or the fact that she's with Franco, but just the fact that she's saying like no, you need to back off yeah um and then deciding to just kill her fiance and yeah, there's other motivations for that, but I because I really do think that they should try again you know they've got so much between them and so much history and their kids i would love to see them together but i'm i'm worried this is just not gonna yeah. really do them justice yeah the whole thing everything between sunny and franco with carly in the middle and franco you know uh, i'm recruiting his mother <laughs> trying to recruit <laughs> his mother to help even though sunny's gonna try and do oh. the same damn thing oh god damn uh you know, with with everything there, it for the characters, it's gonna end badly all around. I think. Oh yeah. Hopefully, nobody will get shot and killed. Hopefully. Because as I've said on the show before, you know, my my point where I would start losing even more, you know, you know, I haven't completely lost with I haven't completely lost touch with with like Franco or anything, but I, I could you know I could see some of his actions being justified, some of them not. I mean, I can understand the jealousy, wanting to, you know, want, wanting to, 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 you know, you know, do something about it. You know, that's justified. You know, looking back, yeah, maybe he's going to more extremes than necessary. But uh, you know, this is this is the soap. You know, go big or go home. Right. <laughs> so, right. so that can be excused a bit. And... I gotta say, if 
Oh, sorry, you finish. Yeah, and and I will admit, I I'm I'm actually pleased that I was wronged, not wronged, but wrong, uh, when uh, when Frank at Franco's birthday party, I thought he was gonna just out the fact that uh, Sonny killed AJ right there in front of everybody. And it's like, and I was like, oh shit, yes. <laughs> oh, mainly because I, 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 I just want Sonny to just be knocked down some pegs. You know, don't kill off the character. I don't, I don't want him to die. You know, just knock him down a few pegs. You know, because he, he, they've, they've got him at a point to where he just thinks he owns everything and everybody, and he just gets what he wants. Well, and I think no, I think they're they're about to do that though. I think yeah. What's going to happen, however it plays out in the details, I think the broad strokes of what's going to happen when Michael finds out is it's going to destroy his relationship with Sonny, probably with Carly too, and I think that's what's going to destroy Sonny. Yeah. Cause... And I'm sure he'll come back for it, because Maurice Bernard is not going anywhere. Yeah. But I think you're going to see exactly what you're hoping to see. Yeah. I would love to see Franco, I mean, okay, I would love for Roger Howarth to remain employed, mm-hmm. but I would love if Franco did not come out of this somehow. I I really, really don't like him, and I, I wanted to throw up when he was manipulating Michael at the hospital yeah. and, and just saying all that shit and comparing how he felt about Sonny making a pass at Carly to how Michael felt about Carter raping him. Yeah, that was a little extreme. I was so furious, and then I was really proud of Michael for like laying it out like laying out what had been done to him and what Franco's role in it had been and not skirting around the issue. He was like, No, you were responsible for this guy coming into the cell or coming into my life and you were responsible for this guy raping me. And then Franco had the fucking nerve to ask him to stand up and be the best man at the wedding. Yeah. And it's like, oh dear. Yeah, this is this is where the details of all of this they they do get into territory here even for me <laughs> uh, you know but as, as I have said before Franco is insane but not stupid I know he's got you know I mean he's obviously smart enough to be able to manipulate Michael in, into being a best in being the best man uh, you know so so he's not stupid and that's one of the things I've actually liked about Franco is, is the way other characters just kind of underestimate him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they realize, yeah, he's just insane. That doesn't mean he's a dumbass. Nina, on the other hand, you know, she's insane <laughs> and she's kind of stupid. Although she does have the excuse of being in a coma for 20 years. Right. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh. well, and that's why the, the only times I do enjoy Franco is when he and Nina are together. Yeah. Because they're crazy. They're very interesting how they... They go crazy on their own, but they try to reel back each other's crazy, which is really interesting. Yeah, I, I, was, I was noticing, like, all the chemistry between the two of them when, when they were doing scenes together. And it was like, you know what? At some point, they're going to end up boning. Yeah. And, and hey, at the very least, she can't get pregnant. So, you know, there's, there's not going to be, you know, crazy spawn running around. <laughs> at least not from Nina. If, you know, if, if he is going to stick around, which I'm, I'm sure he is, I yeah. would much rather it be in scenes with Nina. Yeah, that those would work. And they would kind of maybe help mellow the two of them out, you know? Mm-hmm. That, would be, that would be great. Or we could have a great supervillain couple. I don't know if we, have we ever had a really supervillain couple. Because isn't it always some supervillain who has an obsession with one of the good characters? Like Faison's in love with Anna. You know, Stavros was in love with Laura, supposedly, and then Lulu, you yeah. know, it's all on his head. So, have we ever had, like, a proper supervillain couple since, like, Mikos and Helena? Um, I think the closest has been Obrecht and Faison for a given for a given value of couple. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Franco and Nina as, like, a supervillain couple. That That's what I want. Yeah. That would be great. Oh, God. And, and of course, supervillain being compared to, you know, the mad scientists that are running around. <laughs> <laughs> Mad scientists and mobsters and everything, and, and and you know that actually brings me back to uh, just to kind of wrap up the show. It, mm. You know, it brings me back to Julian. Uh, you know, because when when I knew he was coming back, when when it was revealed that he was, you know, that Derek Wells was Julian Jerome, I did my digging, I did my research, and Julian, you know, back in the eighties, you know, he's a real bad guy, and so of course, knowing this, he's back now, and it's like, oh shit, you know, th- this is the bad guy. But then they start 
changing you know they they start developing him as a character you know hmm. you know it turns out that he's sam's father lucas's father danny's his grandson and, and they're mellowing him up a little bit and to me uh -huh. he, he's becoming more sympathetic to me as a character hmm. i mean yeah he's done some heinous things but at the same time you know he, he's a little bit more sympathetic how the fuck do i have sympathy for him but not for sonny <laughs> Uh, I'm almost the the opposite. Like I've just maybe just because I've like quote unquote known Sonny for so long, I get him more. But Julian comes on. He's shot his sister. He like he and Ava threatening each other left and right, and then he he uses Danny's illness as a shield. He lies to Lexus again and again and again. He frames an innocent man, sends him away, mm -hmm. and then has. Again, kind of has like the gall to like keep pursuing Alexis despite how he, they know Molly feels. And honestly, I'm so team Molly in this whole Alexis Julian Molly deal. I feel so bad for her. Um, so I, I mean, I it's not that I don't sympathize with Julian at all. Yeah. But I just I can't wait for like all his fucking lies to come out and him to like have to kind of beg his loved ones for forgiveness because I think he's pulled a lot of shit in the name of. I don't even know protecting them, but it, yeah, he's not going about it the right way. If he really wants in Alexis's life, in Sam's life, in Danny's life, yeah. Although he he was telling the truth when he told Alexis he's not working for Luke Spencer, he is technically <laughs> telling the truth. Yeah, but he's still <laughs> all mobbed up. He still knows what happened to Rick. Yeah, and 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 to be fair, when your life is threatened, to keep that information secret, that that. That's a little understandable. It's not cool. It's not good, but you can understand a little bit. Yeah, well, but at the least he should back off and give Alexis and Molly their space. For, cause, because he, he thinks that Rick is dead, too. He doesn't know that Rick is death was faked. Yeah. And he so he knows how much that means to Molly, and he shouldn't be putting Alexis in the position where she has to choose him or Molly yeah. in the first place. And, and I think there was at least one point where he was going to try and do that, but... Yeah, and they were interrupted. Molly was, like, demanding answers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was so annoyed. Someone came in, I think. Yeah, it's, it's like, damn it, he's trying to do the right thing. Ugh, but, but, yeah, but uh, with that, uh, we're, that's about our hour mark right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, well, Julia, it, it's been a pleasure. I, I hope you come back for more shows. I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it will be it will be great. And if you guys out there listening, you want to write in and and, and tell us how awesome she did. Uh, she she called me on a few things. I I I like to say that Namia would call me on a couple of those things too, but um, but you know you know a couple people calling me out on things that I I do need that. <laughs> Especially like like you had mentioned earlier, I was I was getting close to the whole victim blaming thing, and, and I don't like that. I, I, I hate victim blaming in general, so I try to avoid it. So if, if I start stumbling over that line, I need somebody to let me know, and and that is very much appreciated. And and yes, this is being said on the air because that that's how awesome it is. That's you know you know full disclosure, right? Oh, so if we wanted to find Miss Julia on the interwebs, where could we find her? That's gh-musings.tumblr.com. Sweet. Uh, you're not on Twitter or anything, or? Uh, I have a Twitter. I think I've made like four tweets. I'm, I'll I'll figure out Twitter and then I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. So uh, here, my big rambly bit here. Uh, if you want to find me on the social media, I'm on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 double X. Uh, you can find my stuff at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Uh, this show, along with the other two podcasts that I do, uh, Thespian Talk and Constructive Deconstruction, can also be found on iTunes. If you're not already listening to it on there, uh, go write a review, give us a rating, you know, you know, whatever it is, just be open and honest. You know, let us know what we can do to improve. You know, because because we can't improve without your feedback. We really can't. Because otherwise, we're just going to keep doing what we do, and we're not going to understand why nobody's listening. <laughs> so you know, that that's that's the thing. Um, and if you like these shows and you want to help support the show directly, monetarily, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For as little as $1 per production, you get access to all of the shows that I do, the, the podcasts, the other videos that I do. You get access to them at least one day before they go live on my site. And you also get a monthly uh, patron-only vlog that's kind of behind-the-scenes stuff, which is a, a very, very uh, simple 
uh, not simple term, but a complicated term for uh, me kind of just rambling at you for about 10 minutes about stuff. <laughs> and I'm still working on other goodies that I want to do. And and keep in mind, this is all just at the $1 level. We do have – I do have uh, – Higher tiers if you want to get on some of those. But uh, you can check that out at uh, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And, of course, I have to mention my wonderful girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, amazing title card artist, award-winning animator. And she can be found at patreon.com slash beckyhop. You go over there. She has links to her DeviantArt account. She has links to her own personal page. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you. I just want to reiterate that she is an award-winning animator, so your money is well worth it. Uh, Again, that's patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian with Julia, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.